Here's a quick technique for working with cartoon eyes or eyes that aren't spherical. On this frog character, we've got oval eyes uh, that fit snug into the eye socket. And if we were to go and animate these, like just have the character look around, let's see what would happen. I'm going to go to four windows and zoom in here, grab this eye. And if I were to rotate this eye, I'm going to try and find the center, just say roughly about right here. And if I were to rotate the eye to have him look up, as you can see, it comes out of socket. Now, if it was a perfect sphere, it wouldn't do that. It would, it would stay within the socket. So how do, we, how do we animate this character who has oval eyes, and, uh, but as if they were spherical? Well, the trick is to work with spherical eyes. But I don't want to change the shape of the, the character's eyes. It kind of gives him the personality that he has. So this is a technique that uh, I picked up from Johnny Gordon years back, and I'd like to share it with you. So we're going to go ahead and let's just work with one eye. I'm going to take this oval eye, copy, paste on, t on top of the spherical eye, just so I can grab both of them, and copy, and we'll go File, New, Paste. I'm going to go ahead and center with F2, and drop the oval eye into layer 2. So I've got two layers. Now this is going to be the eye that I work with, my final eye, and and layer two is the oval eye is going to be my template that I'll get rid of once I have my eye set up. So let's go ahead and save that off. So save object. We'll call this oval eye 001. And let's fire it over to layout. Send object to layout. Okay, so I have my oval eye and I have my spherical eye. Since my oval eye is just my template, I'm going to go ahead and move over to my scene editor and I'm going to change layer 2 to verts. Uh, just so that we can see where it is but we will be able to see our spherical eye. And I need to draw some bones so I'm going to temporarily go into wireframe mode and change over to the right view so that I can draw some bones in here. I'm going to have um, two bones and I'm going to start from the the center of my my sphere so that it'll rotate properly. So I'll go over to the setup tab and choose draw child bones because I'm going to draw two. I'm just going to draw a small bone right here and I'll draw a child off of it that's much bigger. I'm going to set the, I'm going to um, use T for move, and I'm just going to move the child bone back to zero in the Z. Okay, I just went ahead and numerically entered it just so that it'd be perfectly at zero. Now, because I moved this bone, actually I'm not going to rest it yet just so you can see what happens. I'm going to, um, I'm going to go ahead and turn bones on. And now I'm going to um, take the, the parent bone and P for properties. I'm going to make the strength zero. Did you see the mesh move, the, the points move? Now, what I just realized um, is that I'm not putting the bones in the, in the proper object. I'm putting them in layer two, which, uh, which is just our template. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that. I should have been paying a little closer attention to that. So I'm going to clear it and its child. Okay, that's okay because we can just go ahead and, and select this object. And now we're going to put bones in this. I'm glad it happened so that you can see that it is important to, to put the bones in the right object. Or that's my excuse for why I made the mistake. Um, I can be honest. So I'm going to move this back. But you get to see me uh, doing it twice, and you don't have to rewind. Okay, so child bone is back at, let me go ahead and type in zero. And now when I activate the bones, see the bone, see the ball shifts, the, the eye shifts? It's because if I'm going to move my, my bone <clears throat> and I want it for my final resting place, I need it to be rested, which is just R on the keyboard. I am going to take the parent bone and I'm going to set the strength to zero because I don't need that bone for anything other than shaping 
the object. Now I need to get this sphere into the shape of this oval. So H for stretch and we'll just stretch it up something like so and let's go back to our perspective view and back to texture shaded solid view okay and now when I rotate my eye it conforms to that shape so the parent bone is stretching it into the shape that we need and the child bone is actually what we're using for animation so if you want you can hide and lock the parent bone but because it's set to uh, zero strength it's not going to affect the eye at all but if you ended up changing that over the course of the animation it would affect the the child bone which is what we're using for animation so see even whenever I go all the way up top we've got the iris and the pupil conforming to that shape so this way this would conf this would stay within the socket of the the eye and uh, be able to have that cartoony eye set up.